All right, hello, American history students. Um, I wanna welcome you and we're gonna welcome uh, uh, Mr. Billy Russell. And you might remember Billy from uh, an encounter message that he gave earlier this year. And uh, Ms. Langert and I are, are eager to welcome Billy back again to Southwest to talk specifically about his experiences uh, in the civil rights movement that we've been studying in our classes. Uh, and to kind of get that ball rolling, we're going to ask, we're going to have a short conversation together here and then give you a chance to start thinking about what you might want to hear from Billy, generate questions, or just start to generate some wonderings about that. So first off, Billy, I want to welcome you. And um, would you mind sharing you. at the outset here, what what is it that you do? What's your work these days? What is that about? Well, right now I'm a retired pastor and a retired educator. I actually served in a in ministry pastoring uh, for, for 40 years and in education for 40 years, believe it or not. I was actually uh, a pastor and an educator at the same time. I actually um, taught um, science and physical education and uh, I, I, for a number of years, then I became an administrator uh, and I, down in Mississippi, in Southern Mississippi. And then uh, I came to Rochester and I did some uh, work here at, at John Adams Middle School and I also worked at Austin High School as an administrator. At the same time, I was pastoring Greater Friendship Church in South Minneapolis. So I was probably doing about 90 miles a day, circling around from the church to the school. And so after a number of years of that, I said it's time to retire. So I'm a retired pastor educator. But what I do right now is I still speak somewhere every week, every Sunday. Um, I'm a motivational speaker. I'm still uh, asked a lot to come speak in churches. Matter of fact, this past weekend, I was in Detroit, Michigan, and uh, spoke over there, like downtown Detroit in the heart of the, the city. Um, and I get I get called to a lot of churches still in Minneapolis. Plus, here in Rochester, I work with United Way and with uh, Autumn Ridge Church. I've had a chance to speak and sing at Autumn Ridge, which is one of the it's a, a congregation, mostly uh, it's a mixed congregation. Okay. And and, uh, and I and had a chance to preach there, and I had a chance to sing there. So that's that's what I do. I uh, we might try and ask you to sing again. Just just know that, and that may be coming in May. <laughs> um, I cannot imagine how much time and effort that took. That is so much that you were doing, being doing all of those things. And honestly, I am in awe of the fact that you were able to do that for so long and do two full time jobs simultaneously. So I'd love to hear though, um, just kind of going back a little bit further. That's what you did for super for a long time, but we'd love to hear a little bit more about your background kind of growing up. And, um, you know, you mentioned being in Mississippi, so maybe describing a bit of that here. And then what were some of those initial connections that you had to the civil rights movement as you were growing up? Born in 1956, um, grew up during the civil rights movement. Um, I was, I was, I started school in a, an all black school, what they call a colored school and from grades K through four. But then by the fifth grade, uh, because of the civil rights movement and everything, everything that sort of happened, we integrated school and, um, at from fifth grade five through grade nine, um, went to an integrated school which I did not have a black teacher doing that whole time from grades five through nine. And it was 10th grade again before I saw another black teacher. Um, a lot of good, a lot of stuff happened between grades five and nine that, uh, that still grips me today. I was actually a sixth grader when Dr. Martin Luther King was killed. And that was a very, very moving time and a very challenging time because I had to go back to school the next day and hear all the taunting that went on because I was at all white school and it was just nine of us, that was, nine black people that were at school. And that was, that was pretty challenging to, to have to face all of that. And, and on top of that, we had, we had crosses burning our yard and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, to, to remind us of you know, our, our positions. Um, and I actually lived through that. That trauma the great in grades five through nine. So so that that that, that kind of that sparked the movements. Um black preachers got together and there were we had marches in the little community. When Columbia, you know, it's a town of it's a city of about twelve thousand, but we was out on the outskirts of Columbia. Well, like I said, it was two hundred of us out in that community. But we went downtown Columbia with the rest of it, everybody from all other communities, and we had had our first march. 
And I, I remember I was um, in the sixth grade when we I participated in my first march. And by the time I became a senior in uh, high school, I actually led a march. Um, we marched out of the school because they did not want us to have a, a day to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King uh, holiday, uh, just have a program, Black History Month. They did not want us to have a program. So I led a march. We marched out of the school. They closed the school down, gave us our Black History Day. So Good work. Mm-hmm. Um, let me ask you, I want to finish with this, Billy, if you don't mind. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you. what would make you want to come to a school like Southwest, drive from Rochester to Chaska, you know, on a on a on a perfectly nice May, you know, morning and come visit with 115 high school juniors. Why? What do you what do you what makes you want to do work like this? What are you hopeful for in this? My whole life story, uh, my life goal is to make a difference. I want to make a difference because of the love I have for God. And because I love God, I love people. There's a sign that will catch your attention when you leave in Rochester. Big sign that a church has up um, on the outskirts of town. And they said, on the sign, they said, love God, love others. But then underneath it, it said, we're working on it. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> out of all that we've been through, out of all I've been through, my family went through, I can truly say I love God and I love people. And I want to see people together. I, I want to see the world come together. I, I really don't like what I see happening now. It looked like we are trying to be regressing, going backwards, uh, rather than us coming together. You know, I, I would really like to see us be able to walk hand in hand and really make a difference in, in, this, in this world. And I, you say, well, that's, that's a big goal. Well, that's me. I, I'm, I, 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 I have a big goal to make a difference in the world. That's just that's just who I am. That's my heart. I, and I was speaking in the, um, uh, outside of Minneapolis at a school out there. I can't remember the name of the school, but it's it, uh, west of Minneapolis. And after I finished speaking, I had a student that come up to me and asked me, he said, how, how is it that you could uh, still say you love people or love it was all white students. How can you say you love us after all you went through? And I, I had to say it, uh, make, make sure I was political, politically correct, I guess. So I had to say, well, I had a heart change. I couldn't tell them I've been saved and born again. I couldn't say all that. But I said I had a heart change. I said, because my heart changed, I love you. And that's it. Uh, well, that's a beautiful, uh, that's a beautiful hope, uh, that we, that we would like to live into as well. So, uh, thank you for this time, Billy. Uh, we do look forward to seeing you in May and, uh, thanks to all the students watching this.